Hi, welcome to the Buffalo Bills pregame show for week 11 against the Jacksonville Jaguars. Now let's be honest, who cares about the Jags game? Dick Jerron was fired. Woo! Thank you, Ralph. <laughs> all right. Thank you, So we're Ralph. just going to have a discussion about this firing. Um, all right, we're going to start off by uh, goodbye, Dickie. It is rebuilding time, in my opinion. Uh, we're going to talk about the coaches, uh, Mike Shanahan, for instance. Um, he was uh, talking to the Bills today, a report from ESPN, and um, so what What do you think about Mike Shanahan? I think he could be a good, co a good fit if he's given the GM control as well. That's what he's looking for. Uh, he's a football man as opposed to Russ Brandon who doesn't have a clue as far as football goes. That said, I will give kudos to Russ Brandon by convincing Ralph that he needs a football guy in charge of yeah. football operations. And also I heard that Russ Brandon has... Uh, Ralph's ear on spending for a more expensive coach, which is what we need. Yes. And, uh, uh, so, what do you think about Mike Shanahan? I'm good with Mike Shanahan. I've been at, uh, outside of Buffalo, Denver's my other team. So, you know, I'm good with the whole Mike Shanahan thing. Um, but if Russ Brandon is giving up control, is he really, I mean, it, will he give up control to uh, let Mike Shanahan do the job as a coach? I hope so. <laughs> but I'm saying, you, you honestly, yeah, you bring somebody in to take your job. On his end, technically, it's not really a smart thing, but, but it's something we need to do, though. Here's the thing. Uh, Brandon was just a marketing guy thrown in, probably as a stopgap more than anything. I mean, and he's done a marble shot with that for 2,000 season tickets. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, he's done a hell of a job as a, a marketing guy. We're selling out the stadium, even though we're having worse product. There might also be pa passionate fans, but yeah. Yeah, well, each year we're having worse product and more seats being filled. And it also might be fear, also, yeah. But hey, if that works, it, if it brings money to uh, Ralphie, I think that's ultimately getting the job done. <laughs> Alright, um, our next thing is, uh, in my opinion, building from the top, uh, the, pit, uh, the Bills organization, they need to get better scouting, uh, better GM, better coach, like everything. That's the only way to win. All of the NF uh, teams in the NFL that are uh, good teams, uh, every year they have good coaching, good GM, good and scouting. good scouting. Yeah. Um, so, like, we need a clear house, in my opinion, and... Uh, get better everything, you know? Well, here's, the pro here's some of the problems right now. John Guy has not brought in too many effective uh, veterans in, and he's the head of uh, the NFL scouting, the pro scouting. On top of that, you have uh, Tom Modrak, who was doing very well with Philly. He was the guy who uh, drafted Donovan McNabb there. Came over here as an assistant to Donahoe, survived regime change. But what does he really do? That's a big thing. I mean, he's getting paid to really sit at home half the year. That's not going to be what you need in today's NFL. You need dedicated scouts, dedicated people, bringing good information to the coaches uh, as far as who's going to be uh, on the team for this year, who's going to be uh, in the draft, who's going to be on the field against them. And that's a huge thing right there. All right, so what do you think about building from the top? I mean, I think that's where you got to go. Like he said, scouting is a big part of it. We don't bring in good veteran players. Our draft picks aren't really that horrible because if you look at them, the once, yeah, once they leave Buffalo, they're like great players. Like Jabari Greer is gone, Antoine Winfield, all these guys have turned into... Well, like, they were almost, great players when they were here. Well, yeah, I mean, just let them go. Right, but I'm saying, so our draft picks haven't been horrible, but as far as bringing in veteran players, as far as O-line, Defense, they're doing a little better, but the offense, as far as picking veteran players to come in, you know, to protect their quarterback, have been horrible. Oh, yeah, over the years, uh, you, Melvin Fowler was a key example, as we were talking beforehand. He was getting blown up by every D tackle in the division. You can't have that. You need a smart center that's able to push the line as well, and he wasn't able to do that. Um, I think we do need to shift. One thing we haven't covered yet is Perry Fuel. He's the guy who's, uh, at the moment, a stopgap. And if he does well, do we have the next Singletary at that point? That's the big thing. And I Honestly, I do not want to build from... I know that's Ralph's thing, building from within the organization, but he's a defensive coach. I want an offensive coach, or right. a, coach a veteran coach that really knows what he's doing. All right, here's the thing. Who knows how much control Dick had on the offense? Uh, maybe he was saying... 
uh, Turk, and then Alex. Simplify the offense. Don't have T.O. and Lee as twins on one side. Don't have them in, in the slot. Don't move them around at all. Maybe uh, Perry Fuel, Fuel will go, hey, Alex, how about you change stuff up? How about you be a little more creative? Or maybe if he knows he's a defensive guy and he knows offense isn't his thing, then let the offensive guy handle it. Exactly. If you, if you know that's not yeah, your strength, then, we don't, have... then don't try to put your hands in something that you know you can't fool with. If he says, "Look, do what you need to do. Let me see what you can do," because if he you know look, if he can, if he does, if Alex Manfield does a good job, then he looks good. But he's a defensive guy. Defense isn't horrible. I mean, yes, no. we need some yeah, work. I mean, so he's it's like he needs six, to stick. seven guys are injured. Yeah. He, needs, he needs to stick to what he knows. And if the offensive guy is good, then he needs to let him handle it. And then, of course, if he messes up, then you try to fix it. But I definitely wouldn't go in there trying to be an offensive yeah. guy if that's not my strength. Yeah, definitely. I think the Bills, they have basically a defensive head coach now, and they have an offensive coordinator. So I think the only difference is that – now that they'll have the defensive coach, the only difference is that Perry Fuel can call for um, four and inches or something like that. And where hopefully he has the stones. And you know what? I think he has the stones to do it. His interview last night, besides the Bills uh, screwing up, setting up a press conference, you know, and not having the mics turned on and stuff like that, uh, Perry Fuel was asked some questions. He gave short, straight to the point answers. Uh, he was asked what his coaching philosophy is. We want to play hard, we want to win, simply put. And that's all he says. It's not beating around the bush like Dick was done, has done for the past three and a half years. This team definitely needs uh, a guy that's got some, uh, some, some stones, some balls. So that yeah. is definitely what we've needed for a I think he has that. He's the, yeah. he's the anti geron as far as emotion goes. You're not going to see... You're going to see somebody getting in the players' faces, I think. Yeah, that's definitely what we need. Yeah. And then you, you need the GM to get the players. And then yeah. once you get them, they uh, build them up, and then you get in their faces, and you, you tell them what you expect of them, they're going to play better. Mm -hmm. And that's what we've needed for a long time. Uh, so we have to talk about Fitzpatrick starting as well. Yeah. And uh, I think this is one of those decisions that Dick was making uh, before, uh, before the changes happened. I think Fuel is just going to continue with it this week. I really think that that's a terrible idea. Um, I would bank on uh, Edwards being back in by halftime. I, I would really want Edwards back in too. Um, we all agree that we think we should let him play to the end of the year. Um, we all agree, I think. Yeah, I mean, yeah, Edwards only, isn't as... I'm the, sorry. Uh, no, I'm saying the only thing that scares me about him is him getting hit again. And but that's you know the, what? That's the that's the, like outside of that, it's like yeah, let him play, see what he does. He's but I mean, for some reason in Buffalo, we've always been you know fickle about quarterbacks. If they don't do well off the bat, then you know we get rid of them quick, fast, in a hurry. We don't give him an opportunity to either improve or get better. Like, you oh. screw up once, and that's pretty much the end of it. With but, that metric, Drew Brees would have been gone. Oh. And he was terrible his second and third year in the NFL. I'll look at where he's at now. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. He wasn't here. So I'm saying yeah. we probably would have got rid of him. And, you know, we never we never hold players long enough to see what they can do. If they yeah. mess up once or twice, then it's like we're done with them. Uh, before this uh, tape, we were talking about um, the O-line, and uh, that's what we need to draft. And um, I first thought we need to draft quarterback. They quickly convinced me <laughs> that offensive line is the way to go. And um, so what do you think about that, Justin? Well, yeah, I, I would say that O-line is imperative. Uh, the Colts, the Patriots, the Steelers were not built up overnight by, with a quarterback. They didn't become successful because of Ben, uh, Brady, and uh, Manning. They, if you look at the Colts, two years before Peyton was drafted, they had Marvin Harrison. The year before, Bill Polian's first year at Indy, he drafted Adam Meadows and Tarek Glenn. He drafted two tackles to per, uh, protect his future quarterback. All right, and now it's time for uh, Justin's trivia corner. Ralph Wilson ha has fired coaches before midseason. Who was the last one? Since we're towards the end of time for uh, our allotment, please click to the right here or on the link uh, underneath me to go to part two of our uh, pregame show for this week.